Welcome back to The Mining Pod. Today's show, we're joined by Anthony Power to talk about mining stock analysis. We talk about his March updates, strengths and weaknesses for each miner, and an update on Core Scientific, which recently appointed a new president. Introducing the newest and most requested course from Foundry Academy, Intro to Hashboard Diagnosis and Repair, offered by the same experts who provide top technical training for mining technicians in the U.S. This essential academy course offered by Foundry will take place in Rochester, New York, from June 26th through the 30th, 2023. With a strong focus on mastering micro-soldering basics, Foundry's dedicated instructors possess years of ASIC hardware experience and will guide you through each step of the process. They'll ensure that you gain the confidence and skills required to undertake basic repair jobs and keep your operation healthy and hashing. Register today at foundryacademy.com. You go back a year ago and you look at you know that mar and Wright were always sort of a little bit ahead of the game but actually that hive and hook were well placed a year ago and if you look where they are now they've been overtaken by so many miners i'm thinking of having like like a yeah. wolf division where where they would probably be in division three you know it, um you, you know clean spark clearly are, are heading towards division one yeah. by the end of the year there are division two at the moment but division one by the end of the year and there's nothing to stop them getting there now because all their miners have been purchased. Yep. So, they, you know, they paid for them. Or, well, they, they've ordered them and they've probably made significant payments towards them. Um, you've got the likes of Terra Wolf, who by the end of Q2 will be 5.5 exa hatch. You've got Iris Energy, who are already today at 4.6. And the 0.9, to get them to 5.5, they've received the miners. They're just literally installing them. So we'll get an update in about two or three weeks' time to say we're at 5.5. Yeah. And they did say that when they all made the order, um, you know, a couple of months ago, it was imminent arrival. So that's 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 really positive. Um, Stronghold, they're going to they're gonna get to 3.5 in the next uh, two months by the end of May with what they've just ordered, and they expect to get to 4 by the end of the year. So those four miners have literally just gone past Hive and Hut. You know, the two oldest public listed miners, Put and Hive, both of them are now being overtaken. And that in this sort of like bear market, it's not as if they've got no catch. I mean, you know, Hut have got stacks of uh, Bitcoin. They are yeah. selling their shares left, right and centre, diluting, you know, we just haven't seen anything, you know, any sort of like real. In fact, we've well, we've articulated, haven't we? We've seen a, a decline in the um, in in their um, in in their in their hash rate, in their hash rate, um, down to two point five now. And Hyde, although it's just over three, I I didn't get um, any sense of where the next where the next tranche of machines is coming from. So they're not they're not even saying by the end of the year we should be this. I think Bit Farms announced some good news today that they've they've uh, managed to um, open their sites up in um, Paraguay, and I think they've got 100 megawatts available there now that can power up at, at something like two or three cents a kilowatt hour. So that's um, got cheap energy there for them, and they're going to start you know getting getting machines in there. They've ordered some machines this month, and that'll get them on their target to six x hash. But but Bit Farms were using six x hash as the 22 goal, so that goal's been switched to 2023, um, and hopefully they'll 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 get there by the end of the year. Let's go back to the the hut eight and hive thing because it's interesting. Yeah, um, yeah. The hut eight news. Obviously, they're merging with US Bitcoin. It's a proposed merger probably will go through in July sometime, and they're sort of sat on their conservative playbook for a while until they're able to make like a strategic initiative. So I, I'm willing to wait and see what happens with that. Like yeah. as you as you notice, the Validius power dispute continues. It's been like six months by now. I'm willing to wait for that one. The, the Hive one's a little bit more interesting to me because it doesn't seem like they're they're not very aggressive at the moment and there seems to be like more pressure on a lot of the spots that they're mining, namely Sweden, which is looking to pass some new legislation around uh, data taxes. center taxes. Yeah. So what what is your thought on those two, just comparing those two? Um, I You know, when I saw that, actually the news came out, um, I think it was a week, week last Friday, um, and... Um, yeah, just I'd literally just I, I read it on the way back from a meeting with um, the CEO and the CFO from from Hive Blockchain London, and um, we did discuss it at, at our uh, our catch up, um, which was surprising because it was it was all over Twitter that that evening, and um, yeah, I mean 
it's going to be a problem. They've got something like 34, 35 megawatts of power in Sweden. Most of it is their GPU miners. Now, they're only achieving, I think, about 300 to 350 petahash with those GPU miners. Um, and I've not really, you know, they, they tell me that it's, it's, it's profitable at the moment. They're mining alternative coins to Bitcoin, but they're getting paid in Bitcoin for what they mine. But bear in mind... You know, those GPU miners were, were, were bringing in sort of $300,000 a day, you know, um, just over six months ago before the fork. And um, it, it's, it's, obviously a, it's obviously a bit of a come down. And, and it doesn't look like they've got another backup plan for those miners. Um, Hot 8 have said they were going to start using their miners for cloud computing, gaming, AI. You know, they sort of talk the talk about what they're going to do and you have to sort of like you know believe that you know they've got some plan in there and jamie's got a very experienced operator so you know we'll see that but i haven't seen any sort of updates from hivis as, as what they're going to do with the gpus because i just feel it's they've done their time now in in mining it need, needs to look for an alternative um and if they still got value maybe they can sell the machines and 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 and, and buy asic miners and get and, and start getting the hash rate up in ready for the next um next halving you want to have your your hash rate in place um, this time next year. Um, so we're just not seeing enough from um, from Hive as to as to what their what their plan is going forward. Very good at explaining historically. I mean, you know, no one can take away from the fact they do have very good margins on what they mine. They do have very lean costs. So when you look at um, their GNA costs. Um, things like you know the payroll side. Look at the um, uh, uh, stock compensation. Very low compared to most of the published miners. So, but you know, I, I think as 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 people in this in this space, we want to see we want to see growth, and we you know we're seeing growth from from a you know from some of these smaller miners a year ago. Some of them were, didn't even exist, like you know the, the ciphers and the terror wolves, who literally just come onto the market. And sort of blown blown past the likes of Hive and um, and Hook. And yes, there are, there are, you know there, there are sort of like you know debt issues with Terra Wolf. They've still got a, you know 120 million of debt to sort out on their balance sheet. I think it's been restructured, but they, they still owe that money. But they, they you know they'll be 5.5x ash in a, in a, in, a, in the matter of you know the next month or so. And you know that's going to be a good good position to be in. Um, their stock price has had a nice uh, a nice a nice rise over the last uh, month or so. Uh, as of most of miners, to be honest, and um, they've had a, they've had a, a reasonable run since the start of this year, um, um, but yeah, it's it's um, yeah it's 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 challenging times for some miners, but other miners are, are making real inroads into this bear market and really growing. And you've got to take you've got to take your hat to clean spot. You know, I mean that that order for a you know forty five thousand miners for just under one hundred and forty five million dollars, that's six point three exahash. For 145 million and you know 18 months ago you know certain miners were paying 50 million for 600 petahash so you know this is different times um i, I listened to a really good interview with this with the um with the chairman and they 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 bought coupons from all these sort of, from some of the smaller miners who were sort of like struggling in the industry and they paid pennies on the on the dollar for these coupons to use for this order. So I think in the end it's it's less than twenty three dollars a terahatch for these XPs, which which um from a price perspective, really, 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 really good and really sets them up. I mean, we had a discussion on the last uh, podcast, I think, about did we see Clean Spot getting to sixteen exahash having had a great twenty twenty two, could they do it again in twenty three? And the answer is yes. They're gonna do it in twenty twenty three. They've already got the ordering now to get to fifteen point nine. I'm certain that you know there'll be a plan to, to 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 get to 16 to show they can meet their their growth targets for a second year running. So uh, very very impressive. Um, Iris as well, very very impressed. Um, they've got through the the issues they had a few months ago with the debt. They're, they're going to have 5.5 x ash imminently with no debt. Yeah, Iris is interesting. Just not to cut you off there, interject some some context and. In your uh, March roundup, which everyone can go take a look at the link below, we'll include it in the show notes, or just go on to uh, the Compass Mining website, check out the articles tab. 
you can see that Iris Energy's March hash rate, operational hash rate was 1.91. Point nine one. Uh, what a crazy increase you know, month yeah. over. And as, as of the 20th of April, their operational hash rate was 4.6. And they're about so to get them 5.5, as you said. They, 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 did, they did achieve three exahash within the month of March, but it was towards the end of the month, and that's why they they, they were the first miners to actually um, uh, put out in their updates the average operational hash rate. Um, and now you see it, literally all the miners... I think by the exception of, of maybe two of them that that you know actually quite keen to put the operational hash rate out there to let people know that you know there's a reason for maybe the low Bitcoin production. Um, it, you know, it could be done to damage or bad weather, or you know another you know a, a dispute with a provider, for instance, like that. So you know, as 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 analysts in, in this space, you you want to understand you know what the utilization of these um of these machines are and you know, I, I think from maybe April's update, we'll start seeing some of the miners put the utilization rate in their updates. I think, um, you know, there's a number of analysts calculating it on the information that we're trying to get out there. So I've been calculating it, and I know that Miner Mag have been calculating it and putting out updates. Um, and I've had a few a, a few messages from certain miners asking me how I've calculated that. So um, I, I've just said, you know, if you want to put the utilization rate in your update, feel free. That'll stop all the ambiguity. But if you stipulate you've got a hash rate available, and that's less than your operational hash rate, then there is a there is a utilization issue there. You're not actually managing to get all your machines active all the time. And one thing to say about CleanSpark is I think their their utilization rate is pretty steady in the high nineties month after month. I've only done it for the last couple of months, but um. I did. I did a check back over, over early months, and it's 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 around the ninety eight percent month after month. So that's pretty amazing. I mean, Bit, Bit Digital in March had a had a great month, and um, you know, surprisingly great month because they, they they sort of mid table in the in performance um, for for previous months and started including them. But they had a they were number one for production by XH and number one for utilization and production. They, you know that they were like literally five percent higher than Bit Farms who came in. As next and Bit Farms, we know as a miner, pretty much consistent month after month. You can pretty much write, you know, we could start writing Bit Bit, bit Farms update ourselves because we, you know it's, it's <laughs> you know we're not shocked with the with the amount of Bitcoin that they mine every month. It's 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 on the net on the nail every time. Um, this month, you know that you know we had um, you know Bit, bit Digital come up with a fantastic amount, and maybe some of that was down to luck. Um, you know that luck does play a part in this, so. You know, whether the mining pool just was a bit more lucky this month, but they achieved you know four or five percent more than Bitforms, which was which was quite surprising, and their utilization rate was about one hundred one percent. So, and um, again, that's more than one hundred percent. So, <laughs> it it sort of begs the question. Yeah. Um. But um. No. No. Good for them. And we had DMG the previous few months. They had some good updates, but they then I think they put out an up with their update to say. They're gonna they're gonna start calculating their Bitcoin earned in a slightly different way, and it means adjusted the amount of uh, Bitcoin per X hash. So it actually sold. I think for February's um, update, it, it it reduced a bit. So it, instead of being the top man, it put them I think about fourth or fifth fifth spot. And again in in March, they're about fourth or fifth spot. Um, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you saw I think from the from the from the reverse of that, you've got um, Hot Eight. Um, who've got their current um, issues with uh, with with the, with the power supply of Validus, and so they're not able to mine anything in Ontario at the moment. So they're literally only able to use the two point five exa hash, um, and yeah, their their uh, their output was um, was you know literally not much more than half of what the the, the top um, miners were were produced. I think it was down down to about fifty. Uh, Bitcoin per X hash when you have the likes of, um, you know, Big Digital were, were in sort of like 95 Bitcoin per X hash, so nearly double what Hive have produced. I mean, hopefully, you know, in the next few months we'll see the um, the the uh, potential merger go through and 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 maybe give them some impetus to with USBTC to you know to get growth phase in there, get their uh, expected hash rate up, which I, which I believe is in the sort of like five to six X hash range. 
and you know start pleasing their shareholders with some better updates than they've been providing in recent times. Yeah, and I want to throw a model at you that I've been kind of thinking about, and just in terms of these these minor updates. Like every month, we get information from them, and then you do a great job of categorizing it and uh, helping us understand it. To me, it seems like we sort of have three miners at this point. We have those that made bad decisions in the last bull run and are now limping along. I'd say like Argo blockchain might be the poster child for that, sadly. Uh, Then we have a middle group, which is miners who the bull run or maybe a subsequent bear market beginning of it didn't go as planned. And so they had to deal with it. I think like Marathon Digital would be in there. Maybe Hut 8 would be in there. They're kind of conservative, slow, didn't do anything and been sitting with their hash rate. They've had this power dispute and then we've had sort of like those that waited for their moment and for the time so it's say like bit digital clean spark iris energy i think most miners sort of fit into those three categories maybe yeah bit, no 100 couldn't agree uh, you know more with you on that that point there um I, I still think i still think um i mean we we have seen we hope we have started to see the expectation we've waited for for over a year with marathon digital that that you know um, they, they've got the miners on site. It's just energization now for, for and we'll see some, again, some big, big ramp ups in, in hash rate. You know, I think they've got three or four X hash waiting to be switched on. Um, you know, they're still planning to get to 23.3 X hash by the end of the year. And may, maybe they do, but, you know, bear in mind that 23.3 was by the end of quarter two last year. So, you know, we're, we're at least a year to 18 months behind schedule. Riot blockchain, um, with the, with the issue they had with their immersion cooling facilities and the damage uh, that the, 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 the pipes caused there, um, that's held them back getting to their target because they would have reached their target of of twelve point six, um, with the, with all facilities operating at the moment, and they you know they're really working to get Corsicana up and running, and you can see from their updates and their videos that's going from strength to strength. So I see, you know, I do see those big players still able to get through this and 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 get you know get that hash rate increased. But like you say, some of the smaller miners who use this opportunity, we're in a bear period where, you know, um, S nineteens, um, starting you know fourteen fifteen dollars a tera hash XPs. Well, we've just seen please spot by you know a shed full for you know for less than twenty three dollars a tera hash. So great opportunities if you had, you know, the the money or the Bitcoin or, you know, you'd be able to dilute to, to get that, raise that funds to get in now and get the hash rate ready. Um, but yeah, some, some, some good positive news. And then some, some you know, like I say, some of the miners still waiting to hear that, you know, you want, you want, you you crave more updates from them. Um, and that's, that's where we are. Yeah. And not to take shots at Argo or anyone else. I think it's just a, a useful categorization. Yeah. Uh, but, I'll, I'll go announce this week. Then, then oh, sorry, sorry. On Friday, they announced that they, they, they've got their financials this week, which will be an interesting uh, day for them because uh, we haven't had a financial update for Argo for a long time. That even though they're on the Nasdaq, they are uh, listed on the London Stock Exchange, and London Stock Exchange their prime listing. Um, you don't have to release every quarter, so you know we've been waiting uh, for for a long time. We haven't, re- haven't released anything for the last couple of quarters. So, um, um, I, I, I mean, as an accountant, I could probably calculate what their balance sheet's going to look like. Um, from an operational point, they always they they always work fairly had fairly good margins. So it'd be interesting to see what their margins were. And these accounts will be as at the thirty first of December. So literally, there won't be um, too much financial information in there about Galaxy. Um, uh, from an operational perspective, because they they only took over the site around about the twenty eighth, twenty ninth of December, so um, it'll be interesting to to see if, to see what their margins were for that sort of like for the, for, the, for that last year, the last or sorry the the, the the reporting period that they'll put out, which will be for the last twelve months um, up, up till the end of December, um, and you know try and give their shareholders some sort of like indication of what their what their future strategy is going forward. Yeah. Um, you know, they're, they're not, they're just not producing the Bitcoin with the hash rate they've got. So I don't know, you know, is there an issue with immersion at um, Alios? I mean, you know, we've not seen any of the miners who use immersion um, show any signs that they're overclocking 
Um, obviously, riots aren't being utilised at the moment. Um, but even in the year they were using it, we didn't get an update from from uh, right to say they any performance or anything like that. But I do speak to you know many of the CEOs and and they're still confident that immersion will be you know um, probably the best strategy going forward. So Jason at uh, right is still keen to make sure that there'll be immersion at uh, Corsicana when they when they fit out the miners there. Fred was very very positive on immersion cooling and he's. Over the last 12 months, he's been, you know, constantly stipulating that, you know, with the amount of, they've got the largest batch of XPs in, of any of the public listed miners. And he's keen to get that, you know, 30, 40% uplift in hash rate from the 140 um, terahash, you know, rigs, um, you know, getting it closer to sort of like the 170, 180 uh, terahash per, per machine and, and, and drive that, that, that uh, hash rate up that way. Um, and he hasn't waned from that that positivity. So he, he's been. They've obviously done some testing on, on a smaller scale, and we'll you know we maybe start in the next twelve months seeing those updates as they as they put more miners through that technology. But as I say, Argo and Riot haven't really produced anywhere near the normal level of Bitcoin. Never mind, you know, any more than you'd expect. I mean, there was there was a lot of speculation when these companies put in two hundred megawatts of immersion cooling in their facilities. That you know we'd be getting twenty five, thirty percent more hash rate, and we haven't seen anything like that. Mm. In fact, both of them are probably twenty five, thirty percent lower than the, the front runners using air cooled. So, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's interesting. But at least that Argo and Michelle will get an update this week. Um, they've just announced the new CFO, so that's a step further. They've got a CEO to find, um, and um, yeah, it'll um. Interesting times. Interesting. Yeah, what they want to go back towards is talking about some of these new miners popping up on the scene that people might not be as familiar with. So, cipher mining would be one. Uh, Terror Wolf would be another. Uh, Bit Digital. We've talked about them a little bit here on the show. Uh, DigiHost. You know, some of these miners that like over the last twelve months haven't necessarily been on the updates monthly or weren't necessarily front and center and on Bitcoin Twitter. But are now really getting there, right? So Cypher Mining has over five X hash online after really not having anything online most of last year. Terror Wolf just uh, increased its X ha- hash production a double in a month. Uh, yeah. A few of these other miners have great uh, operational hash rates every month over month. Any thoughts on how this is developing, and if maybe these are like the miners of the next cycle coming up? Yeah, I think. I mean, we've 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 already alluded to you know Terror Wolf. Um, you know, um, as I say. They were they were you know less than two, they had an operational hash rate of less than two x hash prior to twenty twenty three, and they're going to be five point five, you know, in by the end of May. So, um, they're already at, they're already over four now. They're already operating over four. They, and um, their CEO puts out um more updates than any of the miners on Twitter. So we 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 do see a lot of what's going on, and and I know he's been interviewed by various um uh, YouTubers and um. So that's quite positive for um for the for the shareholders. But bear in mind, we had that positivity with Peter Wall two years ago. I mean, Peter was a great communicator, you know, YouTube video every month, question and answer every other month with shareholders. And um, you know, we know how that ended up. So, you know, it's always a bit a bit cautious when, 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 you know, making sure that, you know, what we're putting out there is 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 realistic. But I, I've been impressed with Terra Wolf, I, I have. I do see the, the the debt still being you know a slight issue on the on the balance sheet, um, and when you compare you know that I call it the middle ground of of miners. So I look at the bit farms, I look at um, um, Hive, Hut, Iris, um, Clean Spark, Terra Wolf, Cipher. Those those miners there that are sort of over the three exahash um, of operating capacity. And you know, seeing how, and I'm I'm actually in the, in the process of doing a comparison article on those seven miners, and that'd be quite interesting. I'm going to do far more uh, detail, do far more rankings on those miners, um, so that people have got a real good view of of you know, not just about production, about everything. So balance sheet, you know, strength of the balance sheet, strength of production, efficiency, um, lots more, lots more um, metrics being used in in that article, and hopefully that that'll be out in the next few days. Um, we shall give it give give the you know the readers a you know 
a good understanding about a lot of questions about those miners, and I thought great to do one. I did one off. I did one on Mara versus Wright recently, um, and that went that went down really well. Got some good feedback on that. And I thought now look at this this sort of mid, mid the mid range miners. Um, I mean, Clean Spot, you know, they'll they'll be a, you know they'll be vying for for top miner by the end of the year. You know, if Mara don't don't switch on those machines quickly enough, you know you you might have a, a new number one mine out there so um you know it's all to play for um, america's minor yeah yeah america and 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 and, and um and they and, and they just seem to deliver you know um it's all it's all good stuff but um yeah the dmgs and the um and the digi hosts and argo what you've got to remember is it's it's the, the talents they've got is is the fact that because they're now very small market capitalization the difficulty for them three, they've got very small hodls. In fact, DigiHost effectively now said we sell our we sell our Bitcoin. We haven't got a hodl. DMG have got about four hundred coins, I think, at the at the last update. And I'll go down to like I think 80, 85 coins, something like that. So not really a massive amount of Bitcoin to get yourself um you know a decent order to 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 add to your current operational hash rate and if you think about dilution, those three shares at the moment probably aren't in a position to dilute because the the share price and you know is isn't sufficient. Where they you know they'd be like giving half the company away to to gain an extra hash or something like that. It's it's just probably not feasible at the moment for them. Stronghold we did see, uh, Stronghold did sell you know the ten million, sorry nine million shares and ten million warrants and raised ten ten million dollars through doing that. Bear in mind that was like a twenty-five cent dilution. I think it's one of the first dilutions I've seen where the share price actually increased on the day of the dilution. Hmm. So that was, I mean, you know, normally if you go out there as a company announce a dilution, and you know, uh, as a shareholder you see your shares, you know, there's, there's ten or twenty or twenty-five cent more shares out there. Your your value of your shares decreases straight away. Um, but I think. The market looked at that dilution, even though it was twenty five percent, and thought very positive for Stronghold to do that, and then and they straight away put an order in for more, um, for, for more mi micro BT uh, miners to increase their hash rate and get it up to I think three point five in the next quarter. So, um, and four by the end of the year, so they're on track to get to four. And bear in mind, I think six seven months ago we were probably saying Stronghold in the same sentence as Core Scientific. Compute North. They were, you know, they had massive debt problems. Couldn't see a way out of it. But it looks like they've managed to, um, managed to to res reschedule some of the debts. Um, you know, it's not gone away, but it, they've, they, you know, it looks like you know they're in a position where they've got a few years of breathing space. Um, let's get through this next halving, and hopefully the Bitcoin price will be in a position where some of these miners will will have some, um, some fair weather going forward. Because that's the challenge at the moment, you know. It's it's you've got to have the revenues and that you know to 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 do what you need to do. One miner I want to actually talk about really quick uh, that's not on your update, but it is interesting. It seems to be some positive momentum, and that's core scientific. Uh, so even though difficulty is definitely eating away at their mining margins, I mean, last year wasn't uncommon to see them mine about fifty bitcoins per day. And they're probably around like thirty eight per day at this point. Yeah. They seem to be picking up the pieces. Uh, I haven't heard a lot of news in the chapter 11 recently, besides the fact that they did appoint a new president. Uh, I don't have his name in front of me, but uh, he did work on the investment banking side for, for Bitcoin mining. So that seems to be like a positive indicator that they're going the correct direction. They continue to mine. The chapter 11 estate allows them to continue to mine. Yeah. With Bitcoin's price at its current uh, range and the energy contracts we know about, it seems like they're in a pretty strong position to maybe exit Chapter 11 in the future if they're able to reconcile their day. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I see so many um, comments though, like Chapter 11, and they're just saying, oh, the likes of Clean Spark or Argo, bank they're not bankrupt. They're going to Chapter 11 to try and work out a solution. Now, the solution might be that they have to go down the bankruptcy route. You know, there's no, you know, the creditors won't give it any an edge and therefore you know you're left with no other option but the, there are options going into chapter 11 it's to get people around the table to discuss a way forward and look at you know and 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 core scientific had a significant number of creditors around the table but at the end of the day they probably have been able to sort of sell the story and say look we are 
we're still the biggest miner, you know, we're still the biggest operator out there, uh, you know, with about 16, 17 exactly in self mining and 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 and, 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 and Although they've reduced their hosting commitment significantly over the last sort of three or four months, they're still quite a significant host miner as well. This last two or three months of the Bitcoin price getting away from the 15, 16,000 lows in December has probably helped them a bit as well. But yeah, they they, they were producing 50 Bitcoin a day uh, up until recently. And I, I like down to just about 40, 38, 40 now. You know, that's possible. There could be a recovery. I, I just don't... I don't know what will what it will be like for shareholders and what their stake in the company will look like post chapter eleven. Um, that's the issue. They do put out a monthly update, but they don't cover all the data in the update, and they've not been included in my um, data. I mean, if they come out and say we sell every Bitcoin that we mine to pay all the you know pay all the creditors at the same time, then maybe we can start putting them in again next month. That I have this rule about if you don't share all the information and you don't do it timely, uh, i.e. You know, if Bitfarms can get their update um, updates out on day one, and they've got ten sites in multiple countries in four different countries, so if they can do it on day one, I don't know why other miners are taking seven, eight, or fourteen days in in terms of other some miners in last month. Some might, you know, DigiHost get them out very quickly, and we did see, you know, uh, Marathon and Wright get them out quickly th this month, and actually Argo got theirs out quite quickly as well. Normally they. They take five or six days, working days to get out. They're out quicker than normal. But yeah, but a few of the miners are still sort of like, you know, tracking, you know, five or six days longer than, than, the, than say, bit farms. And I just don't understand why. This information, they're seeing this information on a daily basis. You know, I've spoken to Ben. He has the information to hand. He gets that, that out on day one, you know, irrespective of what all the other miners are doing. That's where we are. And nobody can argue with the numbers they put out. It's, it, it, you know, they tend to be, you know, um, they were they were in the top two last year, and the, they're at the moment they're sort of like in in top place overall for 2023 from a from a production um, stroke, you know. Yeah, utilization along with Clean Spark have done very well, and then Hiver, you know, and, and I we we know the four that you know tend to put out the best updates from produ from a pr production process, but it, you know we we I've I've had to rush some of them through um, to try and get them updates in because I, I said I'm on a deadline for my article. Um, and I think the article went out on the twenty third this month. It's like you know, that's that's like only seven days before the next one start needs to, yeah. needs to be prepared. So um, yeah, but um, yeah, core scientific. We will be having this conversation over a year ago. It was a monster miner. I mean, I just hope you know they've they've obviously thought about cost as well because I think that was an issue for them. They were sort of spending money that they didn't have, and um, it was well publicised about the um, the use of uh, private jets and things like that to get them around and maybe they're making more use of the great hand buses now whatever to to get to 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 bitcoin conferences and stuff like that and you know with some of these miners as, as an accountant at heart it's all about reducing cost and i'd be telling some of these miners that we spoke about that having issues at the moment reduce your costs you know really reduce your costs because that's the way you're going to survive yeah the inevitable if you don't the inevitable will happen and, uh, and I, I think a good point here, uh, following up what you're saying is like, if you do reduce your cost, well, you get to take advantage of the upside during the bear market. So think of all these teams that did have savvy plays, Clean Spark probably being the most notable one, but maybe even Iris Energy, right? Like they, they create a separate vehicle for that debt. They were able to offload that debt and that, you know, there might be ramifications down the road for them choosing to do that. But at the time, it's worked out pretty well, right? They have about 5.5x ash online. So uh, yeah, it's, been, it's been a success. It's been, a, you know, I mean, it was a success story for them um, navigating through that issue with the debt. Well, they they were fully aware that you know the debt that they had in the SPVs had no impact on the, on the main company itself. And I suppose when you're taking out those large orders, nobody expected the price of Bitcoin having been at sixty nine thousand to drop to sort of fifteen thousand, and also the fact that the miners that were uh, used as collateral against those loans were also dropping in price significantly as well. Uh, obviously, you know lenders are going to be more savvy going forward. Um, if there are going to be lenders going forward, it's going to be it's going to be challenging times. But they've got through that, and um, Big Farms is exactly the same. They did they did something very very similar to to Iris. They had it. They had um, debt, and they were able to to sort of like you know literally um, uh, get rid of that debt for pet you no know, for for 
I think mean, 30 or 40 cents on the dollar or something like that. It was, you know, a good deal for them. So they, they managed to, you know, get their debt. And again, in March, they, they reduced their debt by another $2 million. So they're down to, I think it's 21 million now. I mean, we were talking 160 million a year, less than a year ago, $160 million on the balance sheet. They're down to 21 million now. So fantastic turnaround for Bit Farms. And, and they'll be more, they'll be better for the experience as well. They'll, you know, they'll, you know, and it's, it's proven that, you know, having a good, strong balance sheet is, you need to have that going through these bear markets. Um, you know, it, it's, um, it's not all about hoddle. I mean, you know, you, you can have people out there saying, oh, why, why are companies selling the Bitcoin? You know, every company sold Bitcoin in March, every one of them, the Huts, the Maras, Every, every company sold. So I think the average was about 320 Bitcoin per company was sold in March. I think the highest was, um, was, 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 I think, uh, Mara sold 750 and, and, and Riot sold just, just under 700, I think. So within their operating, uh, amounts and Hup, I think Hut sold 240, um, but the model there's, there's been some analysis done on, on, on the three options of either sell your Bitcoin like Iris and CleanSpark do on a daily basis, hodl like Mara and Hook did for all those for all those months and, and years, or a combination of both. And the best strategy was a combination of both. You know, sell some of your Bitcoin to to to, to get yourself forward. And that was the be- that was the best scenario. So so you've had these um Number crunchers have gone through there and looked at all scenarios and took the numbers and said, if you'd have done this, these three options, what what would have been the best way to navigate through it? And it was a, it was actually, you know, um, sell some of sell some of your operational, yeah, um, at mine Bitcoin was was a way was a way to do it, and um, and 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 you know, it would be interesting going into this bear market how how you know how the companies navigate that. I mean, in, in all honesty, there's only sort of um i think three or four miners now with with any reasonable huddle so you've yeah. got huts you got we've got marathon with the most bitcoin you've got then you've got Hup, uh, right blockchain and hive um if you're looking at companies with more than a thousand you know at probably two thousand bitcoin those four fall into that category so they've got some sort of like um um breathing space to help them get to the next their next uh, level from a strategy perspective totally anthony i think that's a good place to leave it uh it seems like there is going to be are continuing to see a separation between some miners from last cycle who are struggling and miners who are taking advantage of the current market. Thanks again for your expertise. For those listening to the show, also check out Anthony's great work in Mining Memo, our once a week newsletter on all things Bitcoin mining. You can subscribe by going to the Compass Mining website or meander to either of our Twitter handles and you can find uh, an article recently posted there and find a subscription link from there. Anthony, again, thanks for joining. Thanks, Tommy.